Welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. It's the Totally Awesome Upset Show. As far as Mike's concerned, because he's just got back from fishing with a drop shot and he's broken the tip of his little rod here. Ah, uh, shame, bless. Unfortunately, better not mention the mate, it's the second one we've had go. The first one actually had a go at myself. It was unbelievably light, ridiculously, I think, too light myself. But anyhow, I'm going to take a look at this. You can see, I'll get it in close up for you in a minute. It's absolutely splintered there. Now, you would think, throw that away, I want a new top section. But do you know, I don't really like some of these LRF rods that are very, very, very light on the top. I know they're, they're catching little fish like this, twiddly fish, straight down. But these are good rods for drop shot fishing. If only they would beef them up a little bit. They just need a little bit of beefing up. And obviously, that can be cut back, I feel, to here. Now listen, I've broken so many fishing rods it doesn't bear thinking about. Most of them I'm still using. Pipe rod's been broken, what, three times at the top? It's gone down and down and down. Fished over 20 pounds on it. I've got an ugly stick spinning rod. I'm not flogging ugly sticks. I'm just saying I've got an ugly stick, 12, uh, ugly stick, 12 pound class, I think it was. Maybe two or three times it's been broken. Uh, 12 pound class, I did say. It's what you think for pipe fishing. Mike's had tarp into 130, 140 pounds on it. Still going strong, still catching fish. And I've had an old Shimano Beastmaster with a flat foregrip, which I really, really liked. Must have had a lot of carbon in it at that stage, I don't know, because the tip went two or three times. Fish to 500 pounds on it, hammerheads, no problem at all. So, don't just throw a rod away, it can be salvaged. Might change the action a little bit, but when you've just got a tiny piece up here that's broken, I feel with a bit of luck, we can either clip it off here, or we might even be able to unwhip this one, use some heat to melt this off, uh, it's probably one hopes held on with aldite, something like that. Pop it off, sand this down. We might might be able to salvage something out of it. But do you know what? I think being a little tad stiffer up here could be better for drop shot fishing as well. This is how we're going to do it. Now hopefully you can just see this here. There is the break in the tip that's just splintered effectively. If you can just see that there. Absolutely splintered. Mike's already got one piece of this uh, glass fibre in his finger. Obviously fiddling around with it in a rage, but be careful of that, because glass fibre, if you get a splinter of it, difficult to get out because it's flexible, slippery, and obviously won't do you any good. Uh, but what I'm going to try and do, you, it, I feel it's too thin to saw here. I'm going to try and cut that just there with um, a standing knife, and then hopefully remove the tip ring with up here, which you can move up here, remove that, with some uh, uh, heat, you know, maybe a lighter or just put it over the gas cooker and obviously not hold it with my fingers. Let's get it cut first. Right, first things first, get yourself a nice sharp knife just to cut that off. No, actually, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. Looking for where those fibres just start to firm up, which you can see them coming apart here. About there, I would think we might get away with that. And just dab it with sandpaper so let's just cut that off there and see what we got left okay on reflection on putting my reading glasses on i can see that that has splintered oh, i don't want to get a, a fiber in my finger like mike did about just about there so i'm going to hopefully just trim it i'm just going to slide this wood back there and cut it straight across just work away with the blade. The blade will do the cutting. Don't force it too much. And it should go through after a bit of cutting. It is probably grass fibre, which is very hard. I just feel it's better than sawing. There we go. A nice, clean, crisp, if you can see that, end to it. So I'm going to trim this off here. And I'm going to see, not quite sure about this one, whether that tip eye is fine enough to go here. If it doesn't go over there, I'm going to cut it back again, just in here, and we'll use that as a tip ring. Okay, I managed to get the tip ring off, but unfortunately I can see there's absolutely no way it's going over that one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut that off as tight behind that ring as I can without disturbing it. And then I'm going to build just up over the back here with a tiny blob of aerodite. 
and that will stop any line that comes through here tangling around. You can't just leave this piece out, you've got to cut it off flush just at the back there. So we'll work away and get that one done. Be very careful with your fingers. Yes, yeah, slowly. You don't want to bend it because it might splinter again. There, it's gone, just like that. And you could just see there, I've no idea where the end went, yes I have, I found it. Just to show you that we did actually cut it off, there it is. So it's cut off nice and flush and there's no fibre sticking out so we got back to the good piece of glass or carbon. Okay I'm going to take this down a little bit more using, you can see they're quite a coarse grain, get it right near the top, quite a coarse grain of uh, sandpaper, it's a commercial grade one actually this one, which I used to do when I was in the furniture business, there we go, I got it right back down, now it's almost flush with the back of that ring. They go a little bit further, I think, actually. I don't want to disturb those whippings underneath. I want to leave all these whippings there. That's about right. Now, I thought of using an old right. I think I could build that up with some super glue because it absolutely goes hard quickly and I can build it up slowly. Let's give it a go. All right, here we go. Just regular cheap super glue. Just going to roll it onto the top and just try and get. Roll it onto the top, just try and get one drip. There we go, I can see it there, use the nozzle just to build that up. I don't want it running inside that actual tip ring, I don't want it to go inside the tip ring. It doesn't actually hurt to come back. I'm just using the nozzle like a paintbrush here, does that make sense? There we can see it, you can see it building up. That doesn't hurt because that's going to give it a bit of reinforcing. They're very, very fragile. They're like almost like hairs, you know, these, uh, these very light rods. But we're trying to salvage something for Mike here. You can see I'm gradually building up this super glue. Come down the blank a little bit. I don't mind coming down the blank because I feel with these very, very ultra fine sort of quiver tip type rods, and I've repaired plenty of quiver tips on barbel rods over the years. That um, it doesn't hurt to come down there because they're so soft that will bend around anyway. And we're just going to try and squeeze one drop. I want to see that drop come out. That's perfect. Now, if I just hold that that way up, you may just be able to see it. The blob is trying to form on the end there. I don't want it going into the ring. Out of that. There we go out the nozzle, that's it, and I'm just going to roll it a bit, give another little dab that side, it's so fine the tip, there's a very very small super glue, I want to get up in there if I can, there we go, put that out of the way, and I'm just going to hold that, just roll it, you can probably just see the clarity underneath, which is the drip if you like, it's the drip, and it's going to roll around, roll around, but I don't want it going obviously inside the eye. So we just give that, maybe it might take a couple of minutes of holding it and just moving it. I want the blob to settle, if I can point with that, on the back there. Not on my pool table, please. There you go, the super glue's now dried off. That nice little blob on the tip, it's not blocking the uh, line guide, the rings there. And it does work, you can see there, plenty of power in that. You can go drop shot it again, you can go LRF in again, nothing wrong with the rod, selfish the rod, he might as well just had a new rod top, he's lost three, four inches, had an effect in the rod at all. And moreover, check this out guys, does anybody know about the new LRF reel miniature? Who knows what that is? And more important, who knows how old it is? Well, I'll tell you what, if he doesn't want to fish with it, I will. I can imagine I'll get at least 14 yards of line on that little reel. Keep watching the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. And don't forget, if you like the outdoors like we do, check out Mike's Totally Awesome Outdoor Show.
three weeks of winding to get any line on. 